So certainly most of you that have clicked on the link to this video to watch have seen the news come out by now that wrestling legend and WWE Hall of Famer Pat Patterson has passed away at the age of 79, reportedly due to cancer. Certainly a legend in the scope and annals of the business. Certainly somebody um, that has had a significant, massive impact on the course of history of professional wrestling, but more so specifically over the past several decades uh, with WWF and then WWF and then WWE. And when you think about Pat Patterson and people talk about Pat Patterson, you know, you're talking about a truly great, on the one hand, wrestling legacy that, you know, if you were looking at it just from a career standpoint, you look at the accomplishments and achievements of what he did like a trailblazer in many ways and an icon in some ways, certainly. But when you also talk about Pat Patterson, it's complicated. And it, it's not so easy to glance over some other things, which is really unfortunate in a lot of ways. Because when you look at Pat Patterson, you're talking about a man that started his wrestling career in Canada. I believe it was Montreal. Um, after a couple of years, he actually came down to the U.S., didn't speak any English at the time. So imagine that, chasing and pursuing a dream, all the while moving to a country where you don't even know the language. Like, that should be some scary, scary shit. And when you think about Pat Patterson coming from that to then going on to being a longtime tag partner with the legendary Ray Stevens. They called him the Blonde Bombers, but you figure Pat Patterson was an icon in the San Francisco area, the Cow Palace, what have you. Like, this is a man that, you know, as part of that great tag team with Ray Stevens, was a, was a big star in wrestling in both the 60s and the 70s, wherever they worked together. Then later on, as you got to the late 70s and to the beginning of the 80s, came to Vince McMahon Sr.'s New York Territory, the WWWF, and became the first ever intercontinental champion in the tournament in Brazil. That never happened. Um, but he was a guy that had a run for a couple of years as a singles guy. You know, one notable match that a lot of older fans certainly will think of of that territory will be his legendary boot camp match against Sergeant Slaughter in the Garden. I think it was in 1981. Older fans can fact check me on the date and correct me if they need to. That's fine. But here was a guy that, you know, while he was doing that, he was also leaning in and doing some commentary. Like, I can even associate Pat Patterson with some of the early years of the WWF transition to Vince McMahon Jr. and kind of that global transition and, you know, him being on commentary for some early notable things in the company's history, such as he was on commentary uh, calling the match when Hogan won the belt on January 23rd, 1984 against the Iron Sheik. Like, he was there. He was the referee, if you remember, for the main event of the first ever WrestleMania. So when you think about the formative years of the transition from Vince McMahon Sr.'s Worldwide Wrestling Federation to Vince McMahon Jr.'s World Wrestling Federation, and as you started that national and then eventual international transition, Pat Patterson certainly was a part of that and a key cog and a key player, especially for what you talk about in terms of the behind the scenes aspects and the creative aspects. He was the one that came up with the Royal Rumble event. That is his brainchild that we still look forward to almost three decades plus later. Like that, that first came into being in 1988. That was Pat Patterson's idea. That was his brainchild. That was his baby. And you look at the Royal Rumble, it's become, you know, an event that we look forward to in all intents and purposes every January. Um, as WWE fans, only secondary perhaps to WrestleMania. And that's a significant contribution in and of itself. And that is on Pat Patterson. And you just think about, he was in a lot of ways Vince's right-hand man, whereas Vince McMahon might have understood, you know, presentation and grandiose and some elements of storytelling. He was not a wrestling guy even working under his dad and so forth, like Vince McMahon Jr., his true genius is never really truly professional wrestling. That's where Pat Patterson came in and was such an instrumental part of so many things that they did under the Hogan era expansion of the 80s and even going forward. Like, Pat Patterson was a key, principal, creative mind that drove so many of the successes that the WWF 
ultimately experienced, and you could even attribute it to later on with the WWE uh, down the road. And for a lot of fans, they know Pat Patterson most of all, ironically enough, as being one of Vince's stooges during the Attitude Era. Like it was him and Gerald Briscoe. Like that's how a lot of people came to know and understand Pat Patterson. And you know, what a good talent he was for the role that he was in. Like the Stooges were high freaking comedy. They were classic. And you hear and see, like even today as the news was announced, you see a lot of wrestlers both in WWE and outside of WWE expressing their gratitude towards him and their remorse and their sadness about his passing. Like, it's not hard to understand that this is a significant figure in the history of professional wrestling and certainly in the history of WWE. And this is a guy that was on top for years in San Francisco and in other places. You know, you could talk about Tampa and so, or Florida and so forth. You know, this is a guy that made a lot of money and then helped other folks make a lot of money. So in and of itself, we should be able to just come on and talk about Pat Patterson's greatness and his contributions and his achievements and just how significant and important he truly was in the history of the professional wrestling business. Like, you cannot tell the story of professional wrestling, you could argue, without mentioning Pat Patterson in some way, shape, or form. Oh, and when you're really, truly looking at the entirety of the picture, like, that is true. But unfortunately, it's not that easy. You can't just ball wash the guy because he's dead. You can't just pretend that all these bogeys in the closet uh, don't exist or aren't there. And certainly there will be some people that will take a very narrow view of it and say, well, I don't believe any of the allegations against Pat Patterson over the years, so therefore I'm not going to tolerate or even humor anybody else bringing those up or that you shouldn't speak ill of the dead. Well, that's crap. We should be able to be truthful about people after they're gone. Like when I die, I don't want people to just ball wash me and talk about how great and awesome I was. No, there are plenty of things that I sucked about. People should be able to talk about those. Like paint the true, accurate, complete picture of me. That's what does the best justice to my memory. That's what honors me. Do not fluff me up and pump me up or be afraid to talk about those negative bad aspects of who I am and what I did. Just don't. Um. You know, for those of you that are not familiar, but most of you should be, but apparently, you know, some younger fans certainly might not have that much awareness to it. You know, Pat Patterson was embroiled in controversy, specifically in the early 90s, when the whole WWF Ring Boy scandal broke out. He was looped into that along with Terry Garvin and Mel Phillips. Some of the allegations, including uh, allowing young boys, many of them underage, uh, to be a part of the WWF ring crew that would go around and travel um, and allow them to keep their position in returns for sexual favors. Um, so that was one set of allegations. There have certainly been allegations that have been leveled against Pat Patterson by other wrestlers over the years. I think superstar Billy Graham, maybe Jake the Snake. If I'm screwing up some of the names, I apologize. I'm just trying to go off of memory here. But there have been several people that have talked about some of these things. I know Roddy Piper, before he passed, had done a shoot interview, I believe, with uh, Sean Oliver for KVA Commentaries. was talking about some of the uncomfortable situations he experienced with Pat Patterson. Um, you know, and it's, it's one of these deals where it's tricky because Pat Patterson was never charged. He was eventually brought back into the fold. Whereas you could say, well, were Mel Phillips and Terry Garvin ever really charged? But they never really were brought back into the fold once the scandal kind of broke. So... Was it a matter of uh, homophobia in part uh, led to Pat Patterson being lumped into that situation with those others? It certainly could be. It certainly could be. Because while homosexuality is still in some ways, unfortunately, considered taboo in our society, you think about back in those times in the 80s and 90s, you could think about just how much more taboo and risque and not socially acceptable it was to be gay. And Pat Patterson had lived his entire life as a gay man. You know, even promoters back in the day, you know, knew that he was gay. Like it was it was a pretty well known thing within the wrestling business, just wasn't open and out there. But certainly homosexuality is not something new or unique to the wrestling business. It has been there for generations. Like, you know, Lord Halford Hayes, you're talking about Jim Jim Barnett, you know, many, many others. Like there are plenty of examples of stories of 
wrestlers, bookers, promoters being gay. Certainly stories that have been spread over the years about some folks, um, you know, exchanging sexual favors with those bookers, with those promoters in order to advance their careers. Um, so is it a matter of the homophobia that has creeped in and associated Pat Patterson with some of those other truly evil, vile, disgusting things that for all intents and purposes, people believe that Mel Phillips and uh, Terry Garvin did? Perhaps. It could also be that Pat Patterson was associated with that to some degree because there was a certain level of guilt in that he was doing some of that. It's hard for me to know. Hard for a lot of us to know. We can draw our own conclusions and we can make our own assumptions, but how much do we really know? Now, we also know over the years that between Murray Hodgson and others, there have certainly been allegations. I think Jim Powers is another one. You can go on and on and on. Um, you could certainly talk about some of the sexual harassment allegations that have been leveled against Pat Patterson. And this is where it can get tricky because just because somebody said you're, you harass them doesn't automatically mean it's truly harassment. Like, it can be tricky. Because on the one hand, you know, when you think about something like harassment, how two people perceive the same thing could be vastly different. You're also dealing with human nature. Sometimes people will just make it up. It's an unfortunate reality in our world where when people are accused are accusing others of things like harassment, assault, rape, like we should be able to just fundamentally believe them. We should hear them, but we can't just fundamentally believe them because there are plenty of people that make shit up and we all know this is true. So it can be hard to know sometimes. But there is certainly a lot of smoke to the point where you would want think to believe that there is certainly some type of fire that over the years, Pat Patterson potentially at least put at the very, very minimum, put some talent, some male wrestlers into what they perceive to be incredibly uncomfortable situations. That could certainly have bordered on harassment. That could certainly have been bordering on or crossing the line of being an abuse of power. And, you know, playing sick games with people and potentially de-pushing folks and ruining careers and ruining lives because they wouldn't return certain favors. Like you've heard stories about the Brooklyn Brawler and people talk about how has he been able to make it there all those years. And the stories of him and Pat Patterson, even though Pat Patterson had a partner for 40-something years, that didn't save him from the dalliances of the flesh of other men over the years. You know, so he was very straight acting in that way. Like he couldn't control himself, apparently. But... You know, it's like, how do, you, how do you celebrate, on the one hand, this really, really great wrestling legacy with massive, significant contributions over many decades and take that and bounce that up against, at the very minimal, certainly a long history of sexual harassment allegations and potentially predatory behavior that also was an abuse of power that really screwed up some people's lives. You know, and for some folks are going to also believe potentially pedophilia as well. Like, they might think not that just Pat Patterson was gay because they're homophobes, but they might think that there's enough, enough smoke where there's fire to think that he was just a pedophile, period, like the Mel's of the world and like the Terry Garvin's of the world. And it's hard to know. I'm not trying to minimize it. I'm not trying to dismiss it. That's why I'm talking about it in this kind of, you know, conversation about Pat Patterson and his passing, because unfortunately, it is part of his legacy. Now, he didn't really hear much about this in his later years as his career kind of wound down and he started to really hear a lot of good stories about him. You know, maybe this is a thing of that he was, you know, a little sexually promiscuous or aggressive and tried to use his power and position to take advantage of folks for his own benefit. He certainly, unfortunately, would not be the first person to do so and will not, unfortunately, be the last. Um... But if he turned over a new leaf, could that have been a positive? Or did he do too much damage and do too much bad to where that doesn't matter? And we shouldn't be praising him and we shouldn't be celebrating him. We should be crapping on him and we should be mocking him and we should be talking bad about him after he's gone because he was a really vile, evil, bad person. Like I said, it's really unfortunate. Now, this guy that legitimately contributed so much to wrestling so much to the WWE over the decades and generations that this is also a part of the story. And, and let's be clear, you know, he certainly in some ways could be a victim of some level of homophobia within the wrestling bubble, the wrestling industry, you know, the, the internet bubble within the larger society as a whole. That is certainly possible. It absolutely is. 
He also could be somewhat a victim of that to a certain degree, while at the same point in time, having done some of the really bad, horrible, disgusting things that he's been accused of. Like, and then also, you know, was it he was doing what other people would do in the workplace in terms of he was, you know, making a move or making a pass at somebody and they rejected him, but he didn't continue to push it and nothing came out of it, but that person perceived it as it made him uncomfortable and it was harassment, but it wasn't intended that way. Like, I realize in today's world, we want to make things incredibly cut and dry, incredibly black and white. And far too often, it's not that easy to do that. So if you see people that are celebrating all of Pat Patterson's legacy and accomplishments, I certainly understand why they are. Myself, I have to look at the totality of the evidence and totality of what we've seen and heard from many different sources over the years and call into question some things about him to where I should be fully embracing him as a legend and a great and an icon of the WWE and of, frankly, wrestling as a whole. You know, I just, I can't celebrate him like that. There's enough smoke there where there's got to be some type of fire. To what level or degree that extends to, eh, I don't really know. But for those people that are just going to focus on that aspect, I kind of understand that too. It's complicated. It's a great legacy on the one hand, and it is also complicated. And when you think about Pat Patterson, you know, one of the most influential people in wrestling, you could argue, over the past 40 years. He's not at the very top of the list, but he's certainly not at the middle. Like When you think about Vince McMahon, a lot of the success of that company enjoyed a lot of the creative finishes, a lot of the great matchbooks, as you may have seen in WWF and WWE over the years, Pat Patterson was instrumentally involved in. Um, you know, he's a very influential figure, and he helped a lot of people with their careers legitimately, both male and female. And a lot of people feel some incredibly strong passions about how great of a help he was to their careers and how wonderful of a man he was. And, and that certainly sounds to be true. But it could also be true that those experiences for those folks is not the totality and the entirety of the picture. So if we're going to talk about somebody like Pat Patterson, you have to talk about all the legacy. You can't just pick and choose it. That's unfortunate. And more likely than not, that's his fault. And he did it that way. So that's my thought on it. He was great for a lot of his contributions and complicated because certainly is a lot of stuff there that even when you want to say, well, the Ring Boy scandal, he was kind of, um, he wasn't charged with. And then the allegations about Murray Hodge and later there was a settlement. There were never really any charges. Like, there's been a lot of accusations, but accusations alone, innocent until proven guilty. Yes, certainly. But you also have plenty of people that walk this planet that have raped others that just because they've never been charged or just because they've never been found guilty doesn't mean that they're not blooming freaking rapists or murderers or what have you. So there's that. So yeah, it's a it's a complicated legacy, and people should, in my opinion, feel free and open to talk about all of it, because it all is a part of who the man Pat Patterson was.